Oh, you know what? I should get my microphone. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Hey, welcome to another episode of Marketing Tips for Doctors. I'm your host, Dr. Barbara Hales, and today we're fortunate enough to have with us Susan Meyer. She is a force to be reckoned with. She is a brand strategist and the founder of Susan Meyer Studio. She helps Fortune 500 healthcare companies grow their brands and has recently launched a branding toolkit for physicians and other independent professionals, which in my opinion is so important. At the Boston Consulting Group, where Susan began her career as a strategist, Susan became fascinated by the deep emotional connections that brands can build with their customers. She now helps her clients gain insight into their customers and develop strategy and messaging to best serve those clients. Susan has had the privilege to work with some of the world's leading corporations. Get this, because this list is pretty impressive. She's worked with Aetna, Genentech, Gilead, Novartis, WebMD, and Doximity. Welcome to the show, Susan. Welcome to the show, Susan. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. Uh, Susan, where do you recommend people start as they begin to refresh and reinvent their brands? I think it always helps to think about your audience, right? Like you think about who's on the other end of the conversation that you're having and what position they're in, what their needs are, what their life is all about. And I really encourage people to think outside of just their own product or service and how that you know how that impacts their their audience um but but start really with an understanding of who that person or organization is um what their day-to-day -day life is like what their aspirations might be what their challenges might be all across their personal and professional world and then think about how you and your brand play into their world um you know it's sort of a it's an empathetic approach, right? Mm -hmm. To really understand and listen to. And so I actually do recommend having conversations with getting feedback from clients. Um, asking for testimonials is a, mm -hmm. an easy way to do that, right? Um, or, you know, for larger organizations to do more of a formal um, survey or uh, interview process um, with both existing and potential customers to understand um, you know, their landscape and how, what part you can play in that. It's so good. But what if somebody is first starting out? Uh, what are the key steps in developing a brand vision that will grow their business if they don't really know who they are or what colors that represent them or what their taglines should be? You know, like, who am I? So how would you help them find themselves? So the who am I part is actually the other big piece. Um, I, I, I still, in that case, even if you're just starting out, I think the first thing you want to do is define who your target audience is and you know what population you are going to be serving with as much specificity as possible. You can always evolve it. You can always grow it. Um, but it helps for people to connect with you if you're very specific about, you know, I serve you know moms in the northwest or i work with you know people who have children with special needs just to get like a a foothold into um what it what it is that you're doing um so that because it's it's so tempting for all of us to say well you know i could be for anyone you know or this product is for everyone and it may well be but in order to communicate your message you need to start somewhere um, and then in terms of that you know who am i question um, so i work with clients i have a bunch of different exercises i do um, to tap into you know what what are my values right um, what are the 
why I call them precious elements of your brand. And this mm -hmm. is true even if you don't have a brand yet, if you're starting out, mm -hmm. if you just think about what are your bits and pieces, right? That mm -hmm. make it you, they can be your hobbies, they can be your particular skill set, your experiences, your personality, right? Like what do you bring to the table that's different from other people? Um, and that's another place I, I often recommend people get feedback on, you know, ask your friends and family um, if you don't have clients yet. Um, and build a little portrait of yourself in words and pictures. Um, in a, another exercise I recommend is going through and swiping photographs. It can be printing stuff off the internet. It can be going through magazines, but do an old fashioned collage where you just grab pictures that go like, this really feels like me, or this is something that's important to me. And then you have this kind of um, landscape of who you are and then you can put it into the context of what you do so that you're building a brand, you're building a business that's really genuinely got your DNA in it. And you're thinking about, you know, at, you know, there's 50 people who sell coffee, just to use a silly example. Um, but what do I bring to the table that's different? And it's easier to think about that if you come in through the lens of who you are and what you're all about, than if you come in through the lens of like, hmm, coffee. What can I do with coffee that's different? Um, well, I'll tell you one thing for everybody listening out there. If you could make a peppermint mocha latte at zero calories, I'm in. <laughs> <laughs> that's a call to action if I ever heard one. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. So, right. So there, of course, you're going to do product development. Of course, you're going to think about the technology or the science behind what you're creating or the food science in the case of the example you just gave. But, um, but I think that has to be combined with the kind of heart and soul of what's behind it in order to come up with the answers to things like, you just said, what should my brand colors be? You know, what should the tone of voice be that I use on the website? What templates should I use when I'm designing my website? Should it be, you know, active and vibrant and have lots of buttons or should it be really clean and simple and, you know, light colored photography? And, um, you know, those things will fall out of the exercise of knowing yourself better and reflecting on, you know, who you are and who your customers are. What are the most favorite colors for brands? Um, you know, different industries have different um, colors that sort of signal the industry. So, you know, of course, in healthcare, you have a lot of blues and greens. Um, the whole color spectrum gets used, of course, across, um, across industries. Um, but if you think about it, and it's, it's a little subconscious, but you know, playful, bright colors will often indicate it's a children's product, right? And we're maybe not thinking that as we're looking at it. Um, or um, I used to do a lot of work in food and sort of more healthful products, organic, natural, um, always had a green component to them. Um, likewise, green for sustainability. Um, finance, you see a lot of stronger blues. Um, so it really depends um, what mood you're trying to convey. And I think that before you get to that creative brief, if you've done that work to say, here are the three adjectives that really embody our brand, it's much easier for you or a creative team or designer or whatever that you work with to turn that into um, what I'll call a visual language. Um, typefaces also have subtle signaling, you know, something as simple as serif versus sans serif font can say different things about um, the type of organization that you're trying to be. So, you know, are you serious or are you playful? Um, are you for a more mature audience or for a younger audience? Um, are you trying to convey that you're really effective and have a lot of credibility um, or that you're fluid and free? You know, these are different choices that you're going to make that have implications visually. There are several companies that play off uh, an imaginary or real figure, like um, an animal, stuffed animal. You have the Gecko for insurance. Uh, this time of year, my favorite is the polar bear for Coca-Cola. Who doesn't love him? Um, and, uh, and so on, so that when you see an image, you just ordinarily think of that company, which is, I think, very strong for branding. Uh, other than for 
large corporations, do you ever recommend that the smaller uh, business also have uh, some animal or objects uh, that ties into them? Yeah, like a mascot. I think that if it comes from a genuine place, you know, if you, if your brand is, um, you know, if, if your dog, for example, is something that's, you know, really special to you, that dog is always by your side, um, that dog could be on, you know, your mascot, no matter what your product is. Um, but if you just decide, oh, I think I need a mascot, let me slap a picture of a black lab on there, it's gonna, you're gonna have a hard time making that feel kind of genuine and relevant. Um, I think that, you know, before you even get into that additional sort of animal or mascot idea, the brand mark itself definitely plays that role. And every brand needs a brand mark. Occasionally you'll see a brand mark that is actually just the word and the mark is sort of in the typeface or colors that are chosen. But usually you have a visual object mm -hmm. that goes along with the name and the, you know, the visual treatment of that name um, that can even stand alone. And the decision of what that mark is gonna look like plays that role. And it is important to think about what it is you want to say with that, whether, you know, is it an abstract shape or um, does it actually represent something? Um, is it, you know, a sailboat? Okay, so why are you choosing a sailboat? What are you trying to say about your company? As long as the story makes sense, mm -hmm. anything can work. You just have to put the work into figuring out what story it is that you want to tell that connects you know, you, now I'm talking about small business, you as an individual who's starting or running the small business, um, with, it has to sort of make sense, at least somewhat with the product or service that you've got. Um, and then you run with it and make it into the kind of coolest, freshest version of that design that you can. Well, that makes a lot of sense. And it actually goes both ways because if people see the icon, they ask themselves, well, what does that mean? Like, why did they choose that? So it, it creates a curiosity for a particular or specific client to then go into your site to find out more about you. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, I had a client in the healthcare space who ran a small business, medium-sized business actually, but she just loved the color purple. It was her signature color. It was just very core to her identity and the company was really her baby. She had built it from just herself to 20 employees over the course of a number of years. And she said, you know, I know that purple isn't what most of the people in my space, she, they were medical writing and consulting company. That's not the color most people choose, but because it's so core to me, that's the color I want for my branding. And I think that can also be, you know, it's also okay to throw all the rules away as long as you have a good reason for doing it. Mm -hmm. um, and um, it was something that was deeply connected for her. Well, and as, as you would agree, I think the, the biggest or most important aspect of it is how not only you can express yourself, but how you could be unique and stand out from your other competitors. Definitely. Definitely. So if nobody else uses purple, then as soon as people see purple, they automatically think of her. That's right. What are some of the tools you use with clients to help them define their brand vision? So I mentioned a couple of them. I have a series of about 10 exercises that I do with small businesses, which are modeled on the sort of larger team style versions that I've been using with um, corporations for years. Um, and they're bucketed around um, ones that deal with understanding your customer, ones that deal with understanding yourself and expressing yourself. Um, and then the third bucket is sort of tying it all together. And you just touched on this. What is it that really makes you different? Um, so there's different versions. There's collages. There's some writing exercises. Um, and there's some, you know, interviewing and feedback exercises. Um, and then ultimately, the most important exercise comes at the end where you have to write your promise. So I'm very passionate about the notion of a brand promise. 
Um, because I feel like when you're putting a brand out into the world, you're making a promise to the people that you're going to serve and that that promise should be the same as if you were making that promise to a friend or a family member, right? It has to be something that you know you can deliver on and that you are going to stand by to the very best of your ability. And I think sometimes there's a temptation, especially with a new business, to make a big promise because you really, really want to be able to do that, but you're not quite sure mm -hmm. how you're going to do it. And um, I, I just encourage people to really think through what are the kind of proof points that you can offer to yourself as well as to other people to say, this is something I can deliver on. This is something I know how to do. Not to say that, of course, we should all take chances and stretch ourselves and start before we're ready and all of those good things. But in terms of branding, um, you want to be able to articulate something um, that's very true to who you are and what you know you can deliver on. And then that's going to be your promise. And, and the unique take is, which is what's going to make you stand out, is how are you the one and only person who's going to deliver on this in exactly the way that you do? Um, and that's a very hard question to answer, especially if you're very close to it. You know, the expression, you can't read the label of the jar that you're in. Um, it's, it can be- a really I like that. Hard. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good one. I, uh, it's, it can be very, very hard to do as a you know, new entrepreneur when you haven't had a lot of feedback. Um, and, uh, and so that's where I, I work with people to sort of be that sounding board and thought partner. Um, cause sometimes it's easier even for a stranger to be able to see you and say, oh, well, it's clear to me what's special about you. Um, and, and that's going to be special about you in the context of your business mm -hmm. and your offering. How does the promise that you discuss differ from a mission statement? So a mission statement is more of a, that's more based on the values. Um, it's a it, mission statement can often turn into a manifesto of sorts. Um, and it's sort of a higher level, like, here's what we aspire to be in the world. Here's the kind of force for good that we're going to, mm -hmm. to be in the world. And it's less about how we're going to actually deliver on that. Um, and the brand promise should be pretty much like, here's the core idea. Like, this is specifically what we're going to do who we're gonna do it for and the way we're gonna do it. Um, and then the mission is like, you know, the promise and then so that we can fulfill the mission. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's great. Now, <clears throat> you mentioned that you have created a toolkit. Is that something that is comprised of the various exercises that we were talking about? Yeah, so I, I put together a workbook um, with all of those exercises in it, um, really designed especially for small businesses or new startups, um, because I've helped you know friends and stuff over the years with their small businesses and and also with my own business. You know, I'm an independent consultant, and I had to do my own branding when I started that business and continue to refresh it over the years. And I know how hard that is, but I also know that the tools and the principles and everything are exactly the same, no matter what size your business is. And so for years, I was thinking, how can I do this in a way that, um, you know, is like, like accessible for, you know, a small business budget, um, both in terms of money and time, you know, you want to do something kind of quickly, you don't have a six month consulting budget to spend on it like a large corporation. And so I, I've kind of compressed, um, all of the exercises in a way that um, can be used in a DIY, like you can just work through the workbook and out, out the end of it comes a set of messages that you can use on your website um, and you know, on your profiles. Um, and, and the thinking that goes into it of, that starts to become the brief for your creative work. Um, and so I, I created that just as a standalone um, for people who, you know, really just want a kind of quick shoestring version. Um, and then I also offer, you know, a couple of hours or I have two different packages, whether, you know, you want just sort of a couple of hours of thought partnership um, for me to help you work through those exercises. Um, or sometimes I mean, often people will come back to me at the end, so I created it as a package um, where at the end of that, I can capture all of that into a brand book that you can then take away and say, okay, this is my brand Bible. It's nicely designed. All the words are 
thought through and wordsmithed. I can use the words in there for lots of content wherever I'm going to be, you know, communicating um, with my audience. Um, and I can share that with, you know, as I hire people or if I'm fundraising or if I'm, um, you know, taking on creative partners or what have you, I have like a little document that I can say, this is my brand. This is what we do. Well, that is really so helpful moving forward. Um, are there any tips that you could leave our listeners with today? Maybe something they hadn't thought about that you, that you could say, you know, this is really something, you know, that I would recommend. So, um, gosh, I've been talking about all the good ones, like be true to yourself and, um, uh, make sure that you stand out. But I, I think that the biggest tip is um, more one of self-confidence to get the process started um, and, and to follow through with it, of course, um, which goes back to that, you know, it's hard to see what makes you special when you're inside of it. Um, and I think a lot of people get stumbled up when they're trying to do their own brand or look at their own brand um, because they get very focused on the product you know, or the service and like, what's great about that. And, you know, how many, um, uh, you know, how many calories it has or how many hours it takes or, you know, like those functional, um, benefits of whatever it is that you're doing when in fact what your customer really cares about is much more like we're human, right? So really what we care about is the emotional impact that those functional benefits give us. And so if we can step back a little bit and say, how am I actually bringing my unique special self to bear on those human beings that are at the other end of my sales process? Um, and that's true even if I'm a business to business business, because it's a human being who's making that decision, even if they're making that decision um, on behalf of the company. Um, and, and, you know, and thinking about how do I connect with them on that emotional level? Um, and so not discounting things like, oh, well, if, you know, of course I'm a friendly person and I'm good to work with. Well, you know, not everybody is. That's important. You know, so, so really thinking about things that aren't necessarily just on your resume or that are like features of your product, um, but thinking about the softer side of things, because those are the things that really will build the love for your brand. I think that's a great tip. You know, I think you're right that, you know, it really just comes down to emotion. But also, you know, mentor, having a mentor or seeking a mentor to help you out is really key. I mean, when Tiger Woods was the number one golfer, he still had like seven mentors that worked with him every day, whether it be the psychologist to talk about the attitude or his swing coach or his putting coach. Uh, if you want to stay on top, you still need somebody to help keep you there. Or if you aspire to advance to the next level, you know, it helps to have someone that could give you that helpful advice, even if it might seem obvious to you. It, it's not really all that obvious or what works. I think so. I think that's absolutely true. And spoken as somebody who is not a particularly good delegator, for example, I have to always remind myself like how important it is to surround myself with a team of people um, and how much when I do have the, that team around me or each individual interaction with a collaborator or, or whatnot, um, I get so much value from that. And you can't just do it alone. Um, and I think a lot of entrepreneurs have that, you know, entrepreneurial spirit and they have this motivation and this self-directed nature. Um, and so they often, not all of them, but a lot of them are a little bit in danger of having that, like, I can do everything by myself feeling. And you just can't, as you said, Tiger Woods, that's a great example. There's a team of people who each are specialists in different things advising him. And yeah, we all need that. I think that's, that couldn't be more true. So for those people interested in pursuing your services, how can they get in touch with you? 
So the easy to remember landing page is called electrifyyourwork.com. Ooh, I like that. <laughs> <laughs> fun to say. Um, and I really believe it. I think you should have fun at work um, and make your work great. Um, and that will take you into my um, company's website, which is called Susan Meyer Studio. Um, and all the resources are there for both large and small businesses um, and a little bit of uh, my writing and thinking about topics including branding and design. That's great. Now, for people who are not that familiar yet with uh, Susan Meyer, I just wanted to point out how you spell your last name, uh, which is M-E-I-E-R because Maya could be spelled a lot of different ways. Very true. But this, this valuable person who you need to get a hold of is M-E-I-E-R. Well, it's been a real treat to speak with you today. We've been speaking with Susan Meyer, who is the founder of Susan Meyer Studio, and her specialty is on branding. This has been another episode of Marketing Tips for Doctors with your host, Dr. Barbara Hales. Till next time.